Thanks for listening to the premiere episode of The Daily Beans, brought to you by Muller She Wrote. If you like what you hear, subscribe to The Daily Beans wherever you get your podcasts. News, Daily Beans, Daily Beans, Daily Beans, Daily Beans. Hello and welcome to the premiere of The Daily Beans for Monday, July 22nd, 2019. Today we have the U.S. destroying an Iranian drone in the Strait of Hormuz, an update on Epstein and his cushy jail sentence, the Judiciary Committee seeks clarification from Hope Hicks, superseding Nader indictments, and Customs and Border Protection is piloting a new asylum rule. And with me today are Jaleesa Johnson. Hello. And Jordan Coburn. Hello. Hey guys, this is it. Yes, it is. Welcome to our daily morning news podcast. Woohoo! The Daily, daily Beans. Beans. Premiere, series premiere, season premiere, everything for your consideration. Um, news with swears. I'm excited. We have a big show for you today. Lots of news. Uh, if you have any corrections for us, if you hear us make any mistakes, just head to the dailybeanspod.com. That will take you to the master site for Muller She Wrote. Click contact and then select corrections. We'll get it right eventually. Um, you'll be required to say some nice things, and then we'll address the corrections as they come in. So let us know if you want to remain anonymous. Otherwise, we might give you a shout-out. So, And if you want to get future episodes ad-free of The Daily Beans, as long as we remain independent, we can do that. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash thedailybeans, and signing up makes you a patron of both The Daily Beans and Muller She Wrote. So you get two shows for the price of one. Those proceeds help us cover health benefits for our staff. So thank you so much. Uh, huge, much gratitude for that. Thank you for being patrons. So how are you guys doing? I am doing well. Yes. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, great weekend. Uh, I saw Midsommar yesterday. What is that about? It is a cult movie, and it is one of the most fucked up movies I've ever seen in my life. Is it scary? It's horrifying to think about and watch. So... Yes. <laughs> I have to check it out. I really like those weird, I'm more of like less like horror gore and more horror like psychological weirdness. Definitely. Um, oh, it's so weird. I'm yeah, very... I can't look at trees the same now. Uh-oh. Yeah. No or anything in nature, really. <laughs> so nature. It's about, yeah. okay. It's like some pagan like cult thing. So, mm. and it takes place all during the daytime, which is crazy for a horror movie, right? Whoa. Yeah, it's wild. Anyway, that's my story. All right. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went up at the comedy store yesterday. That was fun. And that's all. Oh, Opened yeah. as a door guy. Dana Gould. Yeah. Did did my five minutes. Nice. And he mentioned he liked one of your jokes twice. Yes. He was a very nice man. He's also, a- um, yeah, he's hilarious. So, yeah. What about you, Julissa? I went to Comic-Con. That was cool. Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. in town this weekend here yeah, in San yeah. Diego. Yep. Big thing. Yep. A lot of people totally. do. A lot of people dressed up. I remember one time I was working at the Hard Rock Hotel, which is right in the middle of it. Like, and, and there's just thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people walking the streets in costumes and really, really good cosplay. And there was a like a convention in from Kansas City, like business guys, like dentists or something. I don't know, like they sell dental equipment or whatever. I can't even remember. But they're all standing out front in their suits and all these people in costume are walking by and they're like, what is happening? And I'm like, it's a Saturday, man. This is just San Diego. Yeah. It's just how we are. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Tell funny. your friends in Kansas. <laughs> that is great to imagine someone coming over here for the first time to San Diego, <laughs> just being completely unaware of what, <laughs> what is happening. Yeah. yeah Tamer yeah. T- reminds me of Tamer's joke about because he's an immigrant, right? He gets here as like a, a boy from Egypt and the first night they're here is Halloween and so all these people are knocking on his door dressed as monsters and he's like why did we come here <laughs> he's so funny yeah I dressed as the Mueller report actually oh nice yeah I just wore my black and white striped dress and just taped the Mueller report on the front and uh, someone took funny. a picture yeah someone was Hell like yeah. oh shit that's funny that's, that's good yeah your redaction dress mm-hmm. that is yeah. the perfect dress for that you should have had a cage around you you were carrying and called them the William Bars oh see that's elaborate I like that <laughs> that's a lot too this bar yeah <laughs> um that'd be a funny license plate if mm-hmm. you really cared that much uh <laughs> we have, that would be weird right like what's that about oh don't worry about it mm-hmm. <laughs> uh we have a lot of news to cover this week so let's hit the hot notes hot notes all right so a story dropped in the washington post um about jeffrey epstein's sweet jail deal in Palm Beach County in Palm Beach, Florida, and how a supervisor at the jail who works for the sheriff uh, wrote a memo saying that Epstein was poorly versed in jail routine and his adjustment to incarceration would be atypical. So he authorized, this guy, the supervisor authorized that Epstein's cell door be left unlocked so that he could watch TV in the attorney room whenever he wanted. They installed the TV for him, by the way. Uh, Rough, rough, rough jail days. 
Um, and six days a week, he was allowed out for 12 hours a day to work in his office. But even beyond that, he was allowed to hang out in his mansion uh, on at least nine occasions without supervision. Uh, and one time he was left unattended for four hours in his mansion. Uh, so the Palm Beach County Sheriff now, I guess his name is Rick Bradshaw. He was the sheriff back then, too. Uh, he's, damn. Yeah, he's been there for a while. I, it's, and I, I think it's the same deputy, too. I'd have to look into it. But he announced that he'll be investigating the actions of deputies assigned to monitor Epstein. So I guess he's uh, investigating the actions of himself mm. <laughs> and uh, his staff at the time. Um, because, like, if I read it correctly, like, Jeffrey Epstein, and, like, they had to wear suits his yeah, they weren't like typical guards. Yeah, they were in suits. And uh, one of his drivers was named, he was a Russian guy named Igor, and he was like a mixed martial artist. And so these were not typical dudes. These were like hand picked for Epstein. And he paid over $128,000 just to have this privilege of having these guards follow him to where he went instead of being guarded at the prison like a regular fucking inmate. <laughs> right. He's like living in a mob cosplay. Totally. Oh, that's so true. Apparently, yeah. a lot of female visitors came, and according to, I think, one of his former lawyers, his name is Edwards, he said that these women would come into Jeffrey's office thinking they were going to talk to him about something businesslike, and then they would be manipulated into sexual encounters while... He's serving his sentence. So it what was like he fuck? was he just kept doing this this power move with people. And I wonder who those women are and if they would ever come forward, because this is his former lawyer saying this. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it makes so sense. While he's in jail for mm -hmm. um, child rape, basically, mm -hmm. and they charged him with prostitution, which I don't understand how somebody under 18 can be considered a prostitute. But OK, victim blame much. Mm -hmm. um, he's in jail, quote unquote. And while he's on this release, he's doing what he's in jail for yeah his, his oh attorney said he was definitely having se having sexual encounters with female visitors they didn't specify what age but it, it did seem like he was coercing these women one way or another and he was doing this at this like foundation that he built some nonprofit job foundation that he built that's where he spent his office time so it's just oh, like it's a place. charity yeah just, oh, just cool. a place where they come it's just I swear crazy to God, every day i find a new reason to not trust nonprofits. seriously <laughs> fucking sucks mm -hmm. what is his charity just Got charity it. for Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, help me. I give the D <laughs> for Epstein. <laughs> God, yeah, I know that's that there's terrible. I know. Yeah. I know there are some good ones out there, but it's just like so easy to exploit. Mm -hmm. For loopholes. sure, a lot of corruption and stuff. I mean, look at the Trump Foundation. Um, yeah. And yeah, from what you were talking about, I think those guards were like more like security to protect him, totally. not to guard him from doing. Yeah, and the, and the Igor, crimes. the Russian guy named Igor, like that was very interesting. Like Jordan and I were saying, um, like off the air, that that it's very interesting that Epstein had a Russian guy guarding him, with a very Russian name, wearing a suit, and this is all unusual to the the prison standards. Like normal inmates don't get this treatment, let alone some Russian mixed martial arts guys. No offense to Russian mixed martial arts people, but just because <laughs> Epstein is tied up and we're the Mueller investigation, like all his people know Russians. I'm just like, hey, is, why is he being protected by these guys instead of regular guards? Yeah, and what was he doing in his mansion just hanging out? That's yeah. just weird. Yeah, it's um, all yeah, very weird. They talk about him like he's a dog now. Like, he was left unattended for four hours. Right, yeah. He wreaked havoc. And one of the guards, he I guess. in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't the Igor guy. It's probably some you know, regular American dude, but he was like, I was unclear about my job. And when they clarified it, they said, you're there to protect him. So yeah. these guards, I mean, I guess guards are supposed to protect inmates, but they didn't even call him inmate. They always they were supposed to call him Jeffrey. All of the guards oh, referred God. to him as Jeffrey. Yeah, and they're supposed to call him inmate Epstein, mm -hmm. but they called him Jeffrey, right? Yeah, they were yeah. like a first name basis. The whole with thing seems very arranged. Well, and Julissa, strange. he was poorly versed in jail routine. That's true. And you know what he said? <laughs> Isn't that the fucking point of jail? <laughs> is to like um, have it suck? Uh, yeah, it's a punishment, I think. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, For the rest of us. Yeah, it's just I, I don't know. I just think it's crazy how they tried to use the argument that they had to jump through hoops because of his privilege, and they were like, people are saying that you know we got leniency, but no, we had to work harder because. But that's what privilege thing suppression is: is any kind of hoop. You just got to fill out paperwork, and they're probably like, this is crazy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Where's my iPad? You know? <laughs> and I think didn't I read something like they were like, oh well, actually he had a lot more problems because of his wealth. Yeah, that's what oh, some guy that off. was working for him was saying. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, poor Boo -hoo. Poor Epstein. Yeah, but that's what it's like when you have these sociopaths with so much power is they really feel like victims through and through, and you can't change their mind. You can only lock them up forever, which that's why we, I don't hopefully get, we'll do. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's why I don't get some of these laws that require you to have willful and knowing 
um, knowingly like no way you're doing when you're breaking the, the law, law. Yeah. like these guys don't fucking think of the law in any format so they're not gonna apply it or remember it or anything like they're getting out of it their entire lives basically yeah so you don't think it applies to them so how could no. they possibly have yeah. knowledge that they're breaking the law when they mm-hmm. don't think it applies to them yeah everything he, from like sorry no i'm just gonna say he spent his whole life like you were saying doing this yeah, yeah. and like people just starting out with just getting your duis sort of you know taking taken care of not needing to go through the justice system and stuff like that and you just yeah it's exactly the beginning. yeah right and the they just Turner's i imagine you just keep world. doing stuff over yes. and over again because you keep knowing more people and making yeah. more money and when there's two kinds of america they talk about it's got to be white collar and blue collar because that yeah. seems to be the dividing line not even like necessarily racial it's like if you're poor you're not going to get away with any of this if you're rich like the sky's the limit you know yeah, and when you do go to jail you, you get to go home 12 hours a day and keep criming. Yes. It's, Insanity. Oh, it's so... Um, like, ugh. what do you think he's going to do? <laughs> what do you think he's in there for? Like, what, these guys would drive him to his mansion or his office yeah. and they would park outside and they'd be like, I didn't go inside, but I saw who went inside. And it's like, why did you just let this happen? You're supposed to be a guard. <coughs> what yeah, the fuck? And why is the sheriff who did that investigating this? Yes. This is all weird. All weird, yeah. yeah no, Maybe no. it could be like a Deutsche Bank thing, sort of, where they're trying to clean their hands of having any sort of connections with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what those guys were doing, but we wouldn't have given him a loan. And mm-hmm. it's like, all right, but you're the head of the organization, and he did, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, like, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is horrible that he was treated so well. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to look into this uh, that I was in charge of. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, what are you even... Yeah, a very understand. high... I don't know, maybe that's not a high-profile case at the time, but I'm pretty sure... It's, that's awful to imagine that that would just be a drop in the bucket of a bunch of sex crimes that Definitely. are happening. But maybe it was like that, so it truly does just slip under the rug, which is grotesque. Yeah, and the judge is not a fan either. Um, if you can, if you can be unbiased in these situations, <laughs> but he basically, um, you know, he he's like, nope, you don't get out on bail. Right. Yeah, it's probably more likely they're just facing so much public pressure right exactly. now, exactly. Especially with Miami Herald killing it and stuff. Yeah, they're finally being you know treated the way they should have. But this is an old man. This is why when I think of Trump too, it's like whatever kind of like I don't know retribution or justice we get out of this, he still lived his whole life being this person. I yeah, mean, he's towards the end. He's what sixty six or something. Yeah. Like that? yeah, yeah. So it's like so much damage already done. So much. So it's really about making a statement for the next fuckers, you know. But yeah, I hope he goes down too. Obviously, I hope they all go down. Absolutely. And and I think that's one of the main differences between like us and trump supporters is if bill clinton goes down we aren't gonna try to defend him Mm -hmm. but if trump is connected they'll try to defend him. yeah of course and like how many times have we ever brought up schneiderman (laughs) after he got ousted zero times this yeah (laughs) because you did some gross shit and now you're gone and that's it and we're not sitting here dwelling on how it was like some anti-deep state fucking we call you know, for Al Franken's resignation, and the Republicans nominated a child rapist to be a senator. Not that's nominated, why but s- some ran. of our listeners were actually critical of that of us, which I understand their frustration. They were saying that we were talking about Al um, for the photograph, and and they, you know, this listener made a good case about how the worst thing that Al did might have been apologizing for something that made it seem like he did more, because it seems like in the photograph that they were referring to, like supposedly he's not touching her, and like I think if he did something then yes it was a bad. joke but yeah even and the fact it was a bit right and and you know i exactly but i think my point is is to say that we don't come down on people for either me too stuff or child pornography or whatever mm-hmm. it is is just so backwards and so wrong exactly and the fact that they were able to replace him like you said with someone that was like worse it's like it's a really delicate dance like in this case i think they should go down across the board but there are some cases where as as a liberal party it, it is it does inflict sometimes more damage because of how hypocritical the other party is yeah. they will just undo all the justice we're trying to do by replacing yeah. him with someone like that so well i wasn't well I wasn't insinuating that. I'm sorry if I would miscommunicated this. That Roy Moore didn't replace Al Franken. Oh, he just like I'm encouraged just him to be. We in- <laughs> got rid of Al Franken for a joke, and they ran a pedophile. Yeah, to and, be, and they're running, him, they're running him again. They're right. running him again. It continues. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to. Yeah, because but your actually, point still stands. Yeah. Yeah, I think they re- they replaced him with a um, a female. <laughs> Roy will not replace us. <laughs> Sorry. Just to imagine a bunch of his cons- the potential constituents just sitting there like praying for him to win the election. Yeah. Fully and well. I mean, some of them believe the accusations to against God? him. Yeah. Believe that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, right. I mean, that has to happen. So yeah. many of us because his what? base supported him even totally. after admitting 
that maybe there was some truth to the allegations, but they said they would rather support him because to have another person in the office that's going to be pro-abortion, pro-choice. <laughs> that's too, is, that's worse for them. Yeah. Than their kids being, and maybe they feel like yeah. their kids aren't affected, but this is so much bigger. It's, it's They're contributing to rape culture in a negative way, by thinking that they're saving the moral value of something else. It's like, it's just like you can rape my daughter just don't kill the fetus yeah. right but of course they wouldn't actually say you can rape my daughter but i'm like how do you not see that this is encouraging of that behavior and your child could be affected by living in this fucked up world they're really sanctioning it right yeah <sighs> yeah and in their minds too they just they they've they've done their own religious moral cost benefit analysis on this guy being a freaking teenage kid yeah sex like guy. r kelly like well his music is so good and he's a black powerful man so i'm just gonna lean into that instead of the fact that he's damaging the lives of young women like yeah. that's just they really weighing out the you know bad with the worse and uh, i say fuck it all right well, like then, yeah. yeah no Smash that's it. what got them into this situation <laughs> oh, okay. but yeah it's like <laughs> It's, it's what was that uh tamber joke like dude you're single you can have sex with whoever you want he's like no no <laughs> that would be rape <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a crazy world um hashtag not all people but yeah there's a lot of fucked up people <laughs> out there for real i yeah. know i watch a lot of forensic files and i'm like yeah how, do, how are there 19 seasons with 34 episodes apiece they're just fucked up people. yeah that is yeah. <laughs> that is i hate that show i know it's we were watching a bit show. of it and you're like <gasps> dude i stayed awake in bed for like an hour and a half i had to tell myself like okay jordan it's okay to process that people get murdered just sit there and just accept it to be yeah. fair that yeah. was one of the worst ones i've ever seen that oh, was like that was awful hellscape yeah I was like, oh my that was God. fucking awful yeah that was pretty bad um uh, sorry but it's okay know, our it's community for, gives us hope it's good for me yeah yeah, yeah there's you know true. we gotta get a group of people <laughs> I, yeah. I do love our community. If you're a patron and you're in the closed Facebook group, it is the coolest group of people. And yes. like, yeah. and if you're not in it, you, you know, you're still cool. Don't worry. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Some but, people are just like, I don't like Facebook. And I respect that. But totally. I'll see you on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> see you on Twitter. Catch you on the flip side. But the cool thing is that if you ever need anything, there's somebody in that group that's an expert at it. Or yes. Can get, like, it's a great, it's not just like a cool like group of like-minded people. It's good networking. Yeah, right? what was that slogan? Together we know everything. Yeah, together we know everything. <laughs> I do feel that way sometimes. And we'll get it right eventually. Yeah, Those are our two yeah, slogans. I dig it. Uh, so Jerry Nadler, he's the, um, what is he, uh, the House Judiciary mm -hmm. uh, Chair. He's asking for clarification on Hope Hicks' testimony because a bunch of Michael Cohen documents, warrants, were unredacted. They removed the black bars because the judge is like, well, if you're shutting down this investigation, I'm releasing this shit to the public. This mm -hmm. is not cool. And uh, he didn't say this isn't cool, but I felt like that was his feeling. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm assigning bias to a judge. That's rad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Nadler is like, well, and that if that's the case, because Hope Hicks in her testimony, besides saying, you know, I have blanket immunity or absolute immunity 155 times. Besides that, she actually did say that she was not present during conversations between Cohen and Trump or or about any present present for any conversation about mm -hmm. the hush money payments. And the these records, these search warrants tell a different story. She was on the phone and part of these conversations and texts and emails. And uh, I think she's going to be able to get off on a technicality, just like Jeff Sessions did, where Jeff yep. Sessions said, I thought you were asking me not just if I had any contacts with Russians. I thought you were asking me if I was discussing sanctions and mm -hmm. colluding and, and mm -hmm. you know, talking about election interference with Russians. That's what I thought you meant. And unfortunately, when she asked the question, she asked if she was present during any of those conversations. And Hope Hicks is probably going to be able to say, I wasn't present. I was on the phone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'd be surprised if now they're wanting to making a criminal referral. Yeah. Mm. Um, and because then you can ask her the follow up question. All right. Were you on the phone for any of those conversations? And would you mind telling us what you talked about? Right, because right. Because now we know you had them. It's a matter of public record. And I feel like the judiciary knew this. They knew what was behind those redactions because when she asked, Rep. Lee asked, she was like, are you sure? You're telling me that mm -hmm. you weren't present for any of these conversations. Are you sure? Think about your answer. You know, she yeah. asked like she knew. And so I think they had access to this stuff. For sure. Unless it's just some like crazy mind game. <laughs> they do ask that yeah, a lot totally they do ask like are you sure do you sure you want to say that you know? right, right i don't know lee's background but was she, do you know if she was a prosecutor in her background i don't know i don't think so oh, okay. i'd have to look it up but i don't think so yeah um but i mean it was a great line of questioning definitely and don't go easy on her talk. because she's hot like let her be hot felon bay like she can still be hot and hot be in jail bay. yeah they exist <laughs> They have modeling contracts when they get out. Like, yeah, put her in there if yeah. she deserves it. But I hope they don't, like, you know, get blinded by, like, 
that at By all. By your hotness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hot Felon Bay is the swimming pool Epstein demanded oh. he have access to <laughs> while in jail. Hot that makes Felon sense. Bay. Yeah. That's where he lived. That's in his writer. <laughs> yeah. Except B A Y. Yes. I need a Hot Felon Bay. Nice. And next nothing to, less. Yes. Next to my underage Lady Lagoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so gross. Um, Alliterations are fun, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah, as you know, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, yeah. uh, so <laughs> there's a a new asylum rule that's being piloted in two locations uh, on along the Rio Grande, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess they're what they're saying, Jordan. What are they saying? What's this new rule? Yeah, so Mark Morgan is the one that was coming out talking about it. He's the acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner. He came out on Thursday and he said that this new rule is in the piloting phase, although there's no reports from people that actually work in asylum saying that they've been seeing it being piloted but what it is supposed to do so it it's a rule that's coming out of the departments of justice and homeland security and with limited exceptions is supposed to prohibit migrants who have resided or quote transited en route unquote to uh, in a third country from seeking asylum in the u.s so basically it sounds like anyone that's coming from a country that does not directly border the United States, essentially. So we can only um, accept asylees from Canada and Mexico. Yeah, that's kind. Of, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't go very much into the logistics of that or, or like if someone, I don't know, flies over here from another country or, or something or like I, I don't it doesn't go into all those details. But um, essentially they're saying that they're trying to do this to dramatically dramatically i like it dramatically <laughs> new word i like how you're pointing at your mouth <laughs> i'm pointing at She's my pointing mouth at her mouth in surprise that Dude, that came out of it it just <laughs> went it just went so rogue it did feel nice <laughs> dramatically it just flows <laughs> off the tongue the mouth is attached to the brain <laughs> We're very credible reporters here. Yeah. Uh, Trump wouldn't even stop to correct himself. Be like, it's a word now. Deal with it. True. And then fucking because everything's fucked, it would be in Webster in like two years. Um. <laughs> right next to Hella and self <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Dramatically. And bay. Um, <laughs> I don't even. Oh, whatever. So <laughs> it's supposed to lower the number of migrants that they're seeing at the border across the board is what they're saying is the goal of this uh but obviously it is targeting a very specific region of people that uh, asylum seeking rights essentially would just be you know taken away Mm -hmm. and and i assume that makes it then illegal uh by this declaration to come here and present yourself for asylum from Honduras, for example. I don't know if it would be illegal or if they would just say no. No, you can't come in. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it would just be no, but... I hope so, because I'm afraid that that would be their reason for detention, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, ACLU is already just, like, waiting for this to start, uh, you know, so they can sue in court. But yeah, I'm sure a, loss- a lawsuit will drop tomorrow if it yeah. hasn't already. Yeah, and a lot of experts are predicting that there's no way the courts are going to let this go through. So No way. Um, it's just so antithetical to, like, everything that our entire immigration system, the good parts of it, are supposed to mm-hmm. represent. And what's, what's left of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark Morgan, is that the guy who says he can tell by looking in a child's eyes that they're going to uh, be an MS-13 when God. they get older? I think that's that guy. It's disgusting. What a winner. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else happened today uh, or this weekend. The U.S. shot down an Iranian drone over the Strait of Hormuz, and that's escalating tensions in the area. Obviously, that that Strait of Hormuz is is a pretty tense area mm-hmm. region anyway. So, what the Navy ship, the USS Boxer, um, a, an Iranian drone came within a thousand feet of it, and I don't think they shot it down. Um, there's a couple different weapons you can use on the deck of a, a ship to shoot stuff down, um, like a Sea Whiz or whatever, but I don't think they did that. I think from what I understood, they used some sort of a technological weapon to disable it, which just caused it to crash into mm-hmm. the ocean. So there's that, and that's all over the news. Uh, and I think that's on the heels of, uh, a, what, a tanker, a UK tanker being taken over by Iranians or something like that? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just all sorts of stuff going on, uh, at escalating tensions, um, and... God, I hope there's I hope there's not a war. Yeah, in Iran. every day I'm like, are we there yet? Cool. I feel like Bolton wants to start one, and he's always his wanted. mustache wants to start another. Yeah, I man, he's just half man, half mustache. Half man, half mustache. Yeah, I called my reps uh, at this number. Write it down, everybody. Two o two 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 four three one two one. You call them, give them your zip code. They connect you to your rep's office, and uh, I told him to please not take us to war yeah <laughs> you know what i think I, I did that same call because i john oliver was encouraging it and he's really good at like 
getting people to do shit. And I could have sworn it was about Iran too. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's been like bubbling for a while, but I did this a few weeks ago. But hell yes, dude, call your reps. Do you give that number to guys that hit on you too? Cause that's smart. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. That'd be that great. Like, um, I'm calling for uh, Jordan Coburn. <laughs> Jordan the <laughs> country? <Yeah>. Hot ginger. <laughs> you wanna go to war with Jordan? Okay, got it. <laughs> I'll take nice. <laughs> What's going on in Jordan? <laughs> oh my God. Um, it's burning. <laughs> What's happening? Um, uh, yeah, that's, I, I hope. And I mean, everything since he ripped up the, the nuclear deal, which was working, which he admitted was working when mm-hmm. he basically said that, oh, today, or it was like a month ago, but he said today they, you know, went over what was in their agreement. And, and so then it's like, oh, so they've been following it. Right. Uh, you just didn't authorize it. Exactly. Okay. What also really troubles me about the news cycle that happened like um, a few weeks ago when there was a video of, you know, allegedly like Iran taking off one of their mines from the boat. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. So when all of that was going on and it was all these competing theories and, and news organizations coming out with one story and then changing it hours later, there was really no resolution. I don't think I don't think on any of that for the American public, which is, no, I think most people were like, I, yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's like, considering this could very well be his next goal for the next four years, God forbid, mm-hmm. if he gets elected, um, this is something that we need to be like really diligent about understanding sort of what any sort of conclusive evidence exists yes, for any of the shit they're doing. I would look exist, for it. Yeah. I would look for it before the election. Wars win elections. Yeah. Oh, totally. So Yeah, fear bring this country together. And not, I don't agree with that sentiment. No, I that's just, just a fact. It's like yeah. war yeah. produces no, you're 100% revenue right. too, if right? The goal, yeah, because yeah, if the goal is to get reelected, then yes, also that which it is because it shields him from being charged with crimes right. right it's hard to get a new president in the middle of wartime because people you know they they yeah. don't want that shakiness of the transition that's his whole campaign slogan like keep me out of jail yeah like, re-elect Trump. oh my god that's great <laughs> yeah but he's like i mean he could very well be turning into a sort of career oligarch mm-hmm. right so yeah. a lot of people get out of the white house and then that's why Ted Cruz and AOC had that rare moment of agreement upon having a law that says that people can't Cannot come back lobby. and lobby after they get yep, out. Because Trump will be the biggest lobbyist of yeah. all of them to come out of this. Yeah. Like he's doing so much damage while he's here, but imagine what he'll do once he's out of the public yes. side, but still influential. It's going to be fucking crazy. Totally. So even if he can't successfully take us to war before the election, even if it happens after, he could still benefit greatly from all of the contracts and yep. fucking... Just like, teeing just, it up like a mar yeah, lago session. are like... Our freaking Trump allies that we have now. Yeah, we have to remember when he goes away, the people who chanted "send her back" are still here. Yeah, and also our allies, the country's allies, we no longer really have them to the same standard as when Obama was here. So that might not just come back because he's gone. They might just be like, "You yeah, guys we're are not fucking BFFs dumb with forever." NATO. I'm, I hope yeah. that it does. I hope that like the UK, everyone's and just all sort them. of waiting for him to leave so yeah. they can be. Oh, can we just get back to normal? Place? Right. Well, like yeah, freaking people are like, I forget which person it was. Um, I think it was their I'm not going to misspeak. It was it was an official though of Iran that was like I'm I'm not I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not even going to talk to this dude. He's like mm-hmm. there's no point in me even talking to him. Yeah. They're they're literally overtly saying like I will not negotiate with this person. Yeah, and it's, it's not I won't negotiate with the United States. It's that dude. I'm mm-hmm. not talking to that dude. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't either. Right? Yeah, yeah. Totally. But I hope it gets better. God, vote people, vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um another pedophile closely associated with trump george nader he was hit with superseding indictments uh, three of them three charges for obscenity child transportation and child pornography so he was already hit up with those i think 12 or so many counts of uh possessing child pornography for having those videos on his phone when, yep. when it was confiscated by Mueller. Mm-hmm. and uh the minute he set foot back in the country they nabbed him mm-hmm. but the now they they found they have evidence that he transported a child from Europe to the United States and took him to his house and took this boy to his house to for sexual reasons. Jeez. So he Louis. Yeah. transported a, a, a the minor. The 14-year-old boy, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 14 year Yeah, 14. Insanity. For context, because this might be the first time people are tuning in, can you give like a quick rundown of Nader and his role in some of like maybe the key things? Yeah, his biggest thing was he participated in that August 3rd, uh, 2016 Trump Tower meeting between Joel Zamel. Uh, mm-hmm. And some folks from the Trump campaign, and and Zamel was the guy who worked for Psy Group, mm-hmm. who wrote up um, these. Kind, I guess they were proposals for mm-hmm. how they could 
manipulate social media to win the election. Yeah. And the Trump campaign says they never used his plans. Then what the fuck was he paid for? Right after the election. Exactly. Nader transferred $2 million to him. And it wasn't Nader's $2 million because Nader's only worth $3 million. <laughs> That's a lot to put up of your own funds. And, and two of it's in cryptocurrency. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, my goodness. But he's got a long history, this George Nader, of uh, sexual abuse, minors, uh, raping kids. Like the worst stuff you could possibly imagine. Child pornography. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really bad. I really, uh, I read those charging documents. He's worse than Epstein, and I can't believe I'm saying that. He's actually worse than Epstein. Yeah, what he was doing. What he did. Like, I mean, they're all god-awful, but, like, if there are levels to this evil shit, yeah, Yeah. Nader is the worst. Yeah, for sure. At least the worst I've seen. Yeah, in this whole mode. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Um, I'm sure there's some sick fuck out there that's like, oh, hold my beer, you know? (laughs) I don't want to know about that. No, I don't. Uh, I didn't even want to read those charging documents when I did. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I need brain bleach. Um... Jordan, what's up with uh, your your liberal paper straws? Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> the Trump campaign has an adorable merchandise idea right now where they uh, sent out an email blast to their email list folks and said, uh, basically, the liberal snowflake paper straws are bullshit. You could buy this pack of 10 Donald Trump plastic straws for $15. I, I do and- think paper <laughs> straws are bullshit. It's the first thing I've agreed with. Um, <laughs> but no, who's going to buy this shit? Yeah, uh, probably Scott Pruitt. Oh, <laughs> I just think, yeah, he, he, I think it's hilarious that um, they're going to spend $15 on 10 plastic straws to own the libs. Yeah, well, if they're Trump-themed straws, I can see how some Trump nut would be like, I can add this to my collection of, like, my Trumpy bear, and, like, I'm sure they have other yeah, stuff. They're getting ripped off to own us. And, and and they've been doing this, like, lighting their Nikes on fire yeah. and yeah. already paying for them. Right, right. Or uh, cr- like what are they like, breaking their Keurig machines or something like, oh yeah damaging their own stuff in this case they're gaining something so I'll give them that you yeah, know yeah they did get something for but sending their money that way that's the true. whole concept is they're being fucked over by Trump who's overpricing straws to yeah. his Trump bets I don't yeah, even understand how it's legal for him to brand presidential merchandise and oh sell that's, it. that's that's already illegal but he, we're so far past that you know it, it's like yes it I, might be campaign funds and that's probably how he gets oh, around it you can sell whatever you want to raise money for your campaign uh, like yeah and he started yeah. running the day after he was inaugurated that's so the first time it's ever happened too yeah, right yeah. insanity yeah, yeah brad parscale said uh i'm so over paper straws and i'm sure you are too much like most liberal ideas paper straws don't work and they fall apart instantly that's fine that's why we just launched our latest product official trump straws now you can finally be free from liberal paper straws that fall apart within minutes and ruin your drink. Yes, paper Probably have CBPs or whatever those are called. What right. Are those, what are those things? That, the, the, the the carcinogens oh, in plastic oh, yeah, bottles. Shit. Oh yeah. What? B- oh. BPA. BPAs. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. That's probably full. Oh of yeah. One hundred percent. I'm sure this was a direct deal with Walmart. And it mm-hmm. was made like in a factory using diesel fuel. By yeah. Chinese yeah. Kids which they're or which something. They, which they <laughs> fucking hear all that stuff and they sit there and they're so brainwashed. They're like, yeah. yeah. They're like, fuck it. And yes. Hello? Paper straws are an easy target. They're bullshit. But, like, just sip from the glass. That's what I do. Like, don't fucking buy a Trump straw. But I get how it's it's totally an easy target. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're polluting. We're not perfect, but we're we're doing it for the right reasons. Like, I don't, I'm not against paper straws. I just refuse to use one. But I'm so glad they exist. Because if you want a straw. They are bullshit. It's, it is bullshit. I, just, I did buy a stainless steel straw. I, I did, too. See, that's what's up. It's and better for al- the environment. Yes. yes. And yeah. there's also other, like, biodegradable stuff that kind of resembles plastic more. Mm. And doesn't turn into, like, disgusting tree mush in your drink. Yeah. Stick that in your <laughs> straw and suck it. I don't know. Yeah. Stick that in your straw and suck it. I like it. I it like does. It. it does seem like a uh, insignificant story, sort of. They're just like a cute headline, but there is some sort of significant stuff. Like you said, number one, you're, how are you able to put your? Or I think Ag said it. How do you put his name on that and sell it mm-hmm. and sell like merch, like presidential merchandise? Because he got all that pushback when he wanted to make the coin. Yeah. That fucking. So, yeah. 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 And then so he's doing that, and then on top of that, it's just a ridiculous issue peddling of anti-environment yes it's, it's, it's like so it's party over like you yeah know, pollution I don't making know, the like, environment a partisan thing yeah. which is horrifying mm-hmm. it's like no literally we're gonna die like yeah, all, like, like all of us the heat like black it. people white people fuck it like ev- <laughs> everyone gonna everyone's gonna and die one color. before they would politicize like okay they wanted to you know make sure the oil companies were making money and they didn't want to hurt the economy and then they started saying yeah, of course, the temperature is increasing, but it's not because of people. Mm-hmm. It, that's a hoax. And right. now they're just flat out, fuck the environment. I'm going to wreck it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they don't even give a fuck because they have so much, like, I guess, momentum when it comes to these surface level issues of 
just hating the libs but yeah. somehow still loving the planet like how the fuck this is weird seriously yeah. and you know they were so satisfied with themselves when they thought of that metaphor oh definitely they're like oh man this, this it shit's falls good. apart <laughs> 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 they were waiting for some product to come from like the environment that would be like not perfect fuck paper. yeah yeah <laughs> weird stance but you know <laughs> yeah it does paper. dissolve in your drink i mean I, i'll give you that it does if you nurse your drink it can be tough That's yeah why also stainless steel ones. and like paper mills are incredibly blue collar as well which mm-hmm. is kind of a big oh, slap in their face damn. of the paper mill workers. They're like, we'll bring your Mifflin. plastic jobs Go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I just, yeah, it's a, it's a very, I guess, good example in a way of Trump showing his hypocrisy and short sightedness. And it's just a weird stance to yeah, have. Yeah, it's a metaphor. The Trump straws are almost like a metaphor in themselves. Like, yeah, we will kill the earth just to own the libs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Basically. And totally. we'll pay for it. And yeah. Mexico will pay for it. <laughs> oh. Is it made in China? No. Have we checked? <laughs> and I will make made? the sea turtles pay for it. You know oh. what would be what he's doing? totally. You know it would kind of be a good thing for them to do is like send everybody a check for like ninety six cents and say it's from Mexico. And, and Mexico, like, Look, we got money for you. That's that would be <laughs> with, like their pesos or something. Like just really get into it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Just mail it for all the Trump pesos. supporters. Oh, God. <laughs> or just a brick. That's a <laughs> Mexico paid for this. Just drop Government it off. cheese. <laughs> Yeah, it costs Surface. like twenty dollars a ship, <laughs> right? Like yeah, it's, it's never like the about Roger Stones. It's, yeah, it's not logical. It's just all emotion. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think this through. Yeah. <laughs> These stones are really heavy. <laughs> yes, yes. He's thinking, oh, stones are cheap. I'll write my name on them and sell them, and I'll make a crap load of money. Yeah, it should be hollow stones. <laughs> and then can... he has to ship them. It's like that yeah. uh, show on Thirty Rock, like Gold Case, where they had to guess which case was full of gold, and the model couldn't hold it up. She was shaking. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so he always guessed. Right, that's great. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Shut it down. It was like deal or no deal or something. It was exactly, <laughs> exactly. gold or no gold. <laughs> Sketch or not. So gold funny. case. Yeah, it's pretty great. All right, guys, we're gonna be right back just after this quick word. You just became president, and it's hard. You want to ignite the right, but you don't have the stamina. You definitely have some explaining to do, but your brain's not attached to your mouth. Who knew fascism took so much energy? We did. That's why we created Adderall 45. Adderall 45 is the anti-filter your dumb mouth always needed, so you can finally let your inner Hitler soar. Stupid morals. Those are for snowflakes. Now is the time for Adderall 45. Adderall 45 is not FDA approved because fuck regulations that make sense. Also because the secretary of the FDA is under investigation. Side effects of Adderall 45 may include Narcissism, orange skin, tiny hands, windmill cancer, late night Twitter rants, mushroom penis, slurred speech, both side syndrome, contorted twitchy face, cafe face, borderline hair personality, hair anxiety, and comb over attacks. Calling into new shows and pretending to be someone else even though everyone knows it's you. Remember that? Inciting violence and pissing all over the Constitution. That happens to be sitting on top of a bed in a Russian hotel room. Adderall 45 not strong enough? Try our Hannity Slow Release Tablet for a steady stream of disinformation 24-7. So talk to a physician today, anywhere they prescribe bone spurs. Adderall 45, because every white power starts with a little blue powder. Hey y'all, this is AG from Mueller She Wrote and The Daily Beans, and thank you so much for checking us out. Mueller She Wrote is a weekly podcast about the Mueller news, but The Daily Beans is a new morning news update brought to you by the Webby Winning hosts of Mueller She Wrote, and it provides the skinny on all the stories of imp- that are important to progressive-minded people uh, in the lead-up to the 2020 election and beyond as we attempt to stay engaged and battle misinformation. That's one of our main goals. So please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the Daily Beans. The best part is you'll be a patron of both shows for one subscription. And being a patron means you get pre-sale tickets for our live shows, invites to private meet and greets, bonus content, thank you gifts, access to our closed Facebook group and Friends of Justice, our premium newsletter with our research notes, and ad-free Daily Beans episodes as long as we stay independent. So your contribution goes a lot toward keeping us independent, and it goes toward giving a living wage and health care benefits to our staff. So please subscribe to The Daily Beans wherever you get your podcasts for your morning updates of news with swears. And thank you so much for listening. More news, more swears. All right, guys, welcome back. It is time for our call to action segment, hashtag. Hashtag. 
So if you're on social media, you may have seen the hashtag free reality winner. And that's spearheaded by reality winner's mom, Billy J. Winner Davis, or at BJ Winner Davis on Twitter. So Reality Lee Winner is a former Air Force linguist and intelligence contractor that served honorably, honorably in the Air Force, and she'd never been convicted of a crime before. But while working for the NSA as a contractor in May of 2017, um, that's the day Trump fired Comey, she printed out a report from her work computer that detailed hacking attacks against local election officials and voter databases in over 21 states in the U.S. So a few days later, she smuggled it out of the office in her pantyhose, and she sent it to The Intercept. That's a media outlet. And the FBI arrested her two days uh, before the report was published. After being denied bail four times uh, and held in a small county jail in rural Georgia for over a year, reality changed her plea to guilty and agreed to a plea deal that landed her the longest sentence ever for a crime of this type in the United States. The prosecutors recommended 63 months, and the judge obliged. And the problem there is that normally um, federal elite cases base their sentencing on damage to national security. Uh, and she pleaded guilty in June of 2018 after being held for over a year in prison, as we said, and she did apologize and took responsibility for her actions. Uh, and U.S. Attorney Bobby L. Christine, a Trump appointee, said Winner's purposeful violation put our nation's security at risk and caused exceptionally grave damage to U.S. national security. But, like, did it? Because according to Robert Katnach, a former DOJ lawyer in the Civil Division, he says that in this case, no one's identity was revealed and no one was endangered. And despite that and her honorable service, they handed down the longest sentence ever imposed in a federal court for unauthorized release of government information to the media. Uh, like, for example, in 2013, a former FBI agent got 43 months for a leak of a foiled bomb plot in Yemen to the Associated Press. That same year, a CIA agent was given 30 months for revealing the identity of an undercover agent, like blew mm -hmm. a cover. In 2015, a former CIA agent got 42 months for leaking a secret op to disrupt Iran's nuclear program to the New York Times. So this is just a sentence or it doesn't seem like it seems retaliatory, right? It seems like an attempt to silence information about the Russian hacking operation because that threatens the legitimacy of Trump's election, first of all, and uh, perhaps retaliation um, for her frustration with Trump's firing of Comey, which you know, uh, meets the federal manual criteria for obstruction of justice when he fired Comey, by the way. So in his press release on the day of Winter's sentencing, um, U.S. Attorney Christine, Bobby Christine, indicated that the sentence was meant to be harsh enough to send a deterrent to any other whistleblowers out there, and the judge in the case even verbally expressed that there was no doubt reality Winter would never see the inside of a courtroom again. These statements themselves indicate that her sentence was not just uh, but the DOJ and this administration appears very pleased with the manner in which Reality Winner has been treated and her harsh sentence for over five, of over five years in prison. Um, so much so that earlier this year at an, at an annual DOJ awards banquet, those involved in securing this record-breaking sentence were given awards. I didn't know you had awards for this. Mm. Uh, Reality's mother, Billy Winner Davis, acknowledges fully that her daughter violated her oath and contract by releasing classified documents in the manner in which she did. But her treatment and the sentence um, for giving us proof of threats to our democracy appear to be disproportionate and clearly a result of, of an overzealous prosecution meant to silence anyone who brings out the truth about Russian election interfering um, because Trump is so t thick skinned. Um, so please head to standwithreality.org to sign the petition and check out hashtag free reality winner on social media and vote blue in 2020 so we can petition a new reasonable administration that recognizes the importance of alerting the public to Russian election interference to maybe commute her sentence. Yeah, she, she's incredibly brave for what she did because she had to know she was up against an unusual administration and I think that's even, you know, more brave and it throws me off that they were giving awards like it's like a Razzie's like like worst foreign actor or something. Like what do they even what kind of award do you give a piece of shit like that? A law enforcement award probably, but it's just that's awful. Yeah, like congratulations on your awesome prosecution and, and long sentencing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I'm like imagining a full blown award ceremony mm -hmm. with the lighting and everything. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> I think of so the porn awards because like, they're all just fun hosted by Tracy. Yeah, Morgan. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Here's our host. Ron Jeremy What's makes up, an Boogie appearance. Down? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His co host, the sheriff of Little Rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so bad. I yeah. Thought it was going to be Tom Hanks this year. <laughs> Yeah, that's a weird thing. Like what I was, I was reading that in the article, and I came across that, and I was like, "What award? Insanity." Uh, that's um, kind of terrifying that they reward that sort of uh, a extra Fascism? harsh sentence. <laughs> yeah, um, I wonder what's the best word for it. But yeah, it just the thought that she's in there for five years for what she did is it it blows my mind. Yeah, and her and her mom acknowledged, you know, hey, I broke the law, but mm -hmm. sixty three months. 
She and the one guy got forty two months for outing an, an agent. Exactly. Yeah, you you can see the double standard here. It's very clear. That could get somebody killed. I don't. I can't think of any thing that she national could have done. security that. Well, it could have killed his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could have killed the Protect legitimacy the president of his president. at all costs. Yeah, 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 I guess so. What totally. state did this happen in again? Georgia. Georgia. Oh, Georgia's not really winning this these last few years. No. Yeah. They haven't been. You're right. That seems like something that should, in what what was the court? Like, like what circuit or, or like, was what it, level? Did, did it like move up any sort of level of appeals? Do you know? They they said all? that she couldn't appeal it essentially, right? By I saying think that it's she... because she pleaded guilty and agreed. Okay. So uh, that they, like, I mean, yeah. yeah. Cause I, I think it's, <clears throat> I think it, like you, you said, I think it's really if you, if you plead not guilty and then you yeah. can appeal your, it um, seems right. like something that should be handled in a higher court by something else, like some other organization. It's a U.S. attorney, federal court yeah. district. I don't know. Uh, I guess I just want something more than Georgia. just like a, the, the court of Georgia, no offense, Georgia, but this is oh, like a, no, national, much offense, it's a Georgia. national security thing, right? So well, it's a U.S. attorney's office. Yeah. So it's federal. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. It's like Southern District of New York, but in Georgia. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Still seems wrong. I'm with you, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And of course, yeah. it doesn't feel. Yeah, right. And <clears throat> yeah, I, guess I wish I, there was more they could do. Yeah. I just imagine that all of these cases would be handled in like D.C. or something in some super official, you know, representative of the entirety of the American right. justice system. If it made so, it like, further, further perhaps. espionage cases. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I they they shut it down federal. pretty quickly, they seem. They, they somehow. Yeah, she admitted it, but like they. Oh, Fuck, man. But yeah, I think I think what they do is they prosecute where the the in the U.S. Attorney's office in the district where the crime was committed. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they have an office that's, there. That's your jurisdiction, totally uh, under jurisdictional rules or something like that. Yeah, because <sighs> yeah, that's a big well, charge. Okay, five years, and it, this started what last year, or yeah, June twenty eighteen is when she pleaded guilty. Okay, and she's already there. She's been there for. A I don't while, know if right? she got time served for her year that mm-hmm. she spent in that rural oh my jail. Goodness. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to yeah, look. Yeah, if they don't give her that, that's fucking insane. So I she imagine l- she got time served. Yeah, she has a longer sentence than Manafort. Then. Yeah. yeah. Wow. By the time she gets out, and that's that's a very good point. Longer Jordan. than Cohen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll probably be a new president, but like, fuck, could someone pardon her out of there by chance? If we elect a new administration, we can petition to have her sentence that's, commuted that's or, or needs to be someone's like campaign like yeah. platform. I'm sure yeah. it's her mom's. Yeah. Put it on there, yeah. Fight fascism. This is so fucked. Yeah, it's messed up. Um, just an s- extra harsh sentence for really what I think is to protect the president's legitimacy. Yeah, yeah. He's just really sensitive about Russia stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she had to know the irony of being the person with, with that name to do this. She was like, God damn it, it's going to yeah. be a crazy headline. Reality winner. Hashtag free reality winner. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the website again is uh, standwithreality.org. I like it. Yeah. It worked out. It Hell worked. yes. Well, not for the, you know, that little part was It clever. didn't work out, but that worked that, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worked out, so. All right, guys, that's our show. Um, if you have any segment ideas or stories you want covered, please send them to tips at thedailybeanspod.com and let us know if you want to remain anonymous because, like I said, we'll probably shout you out. So, guys, you have any final thoughts? Just uh, stoked to keep this going. This will be really interesting hearing feedback from everyone like beyond the patrons on a mm-hmm. daily basis. I'm really stoked to hear what you guys think about it. Definitely. Yeah, I was just going to say it's cool to release this to the wider audience now. Mm-hmm. I'm excited that you guys are uh, listening. <laughs> You all, yeah, gender neutral. Y'all, those in Georgia, I hope it, I didn't offend you. Y'all, when I yep. said much offense, mm-hmm. but much offense to the judicial system in Georgia, not the people. Yeah, good and people. It, yeah, it's it's under bar, but it yeah. wasn't at the time. It was Sessions. Mm. So, fuck, under the race. Not a good possum. track record there with these AGs. No, so far, <laughs> not I'm good. Not loving it. <laughs> oh God, yeah. So far, pretty bad. Pretty bad scene. Yeah, we gotta change the game. Yeah, it's like a freaking Olympic training center for the worst politicians in mm-hmm. the country. Yeah. Yep. Vote and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I've been Ag. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I've been Jordan Coburn. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is produced by AG, featuring Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn, and engineered and edited by Mackenzie Mazell and Starburns Industries. Our marketing manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our merchandising manager is Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Fact-checking and research by AG, Jaleesa Johnson, and Jordan Coburn, with executive assistance by Amanda Reeder. Our music is written and performed by They Might Be Giants. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is dailybeanspod.com.